Okay, so we're going to look at a certain type of sequence where first of all we just start off with a given number of terms. So our first n terms here could be any numbers you like. But then after that point the next term is found by taking the mean of all of the previous terms. The next term after that is found by again taking the mean of all of the previous terms, including this new term that we've just added, and so on. So we can think about this sequence as if we effectively start with some numbers, then the next term is the mean of those numbers, then the next term is the mean of this data set, so we're adding a number to this set of numbers at each point. And if we look at just an example here, let's say we start off with our first n terms are just 3, 2, and 10, then you can see that the mean of these three numbers is going to be 5, so the next term in this sequence will be 5. But then the next term in this sequence is just the mean of all of these numbers, and we've just added a 5 to this data set, which isn't going to change the mean. So the next term after this will be 5, and again, if we just keep adding the mean of a data set to that data set, it's not going to change the mean, so we just get the mean repeating over and over. So this sequence isn't actually particularly interesting at a glance, because we just start with n numbers like this, and the next term after that would just be the mean of those numbers, and because adding the mean to the data set doesn't change the value of the mean, the next term after that would be the mean, so we just get the mean of these n numbers repeating over and over. So why are we looking at this sequence? Well, first of all we've got a simpler way of defining this, where we could just say that the first n terms are these constants, then every term after that is the mean of those n numbers. But then we've also got this more complicated definition where we define the next term as the mean of all of the previous terms in the sequence. So because we've got this more complicated definition, and we know that this actually matches up with our simpler definition where we just repeat the mean, we're able to extract some quite interesting information here. So let's first of all just look at the n plus 1th term. So we can say x n plus 1, once we've got past our starting n numbers, the next one is the mean of all of the previous terms. And we'll just write this as s divided by n. So we'll say s is the sum of our first n terms, x1, the sum all the way up to xn. So we know that the n plus 1th term is just the mean of the first n numbers, and we know that the next term is going to be equal to this as well. But we could also write xn plus 2 using the more complicated definition as it's the sum of these first n numbers. So it's s, then it's plus xn plus 1. So we can say this is actually plus another s over n, and this is all divided by n plus 1. But we also know that this term, even though we've got this more complex definition for it, we also know that every term is just equal to s divided by n, because it's just the mean of the first n numbers. So now we've got an equation here from which we can extract some quite interesting information. So let's split this fraction up just into two separate fractions. So we'll write it as s over n plus 1 plus, and this s over n divided by n plus 1 term gives us s over n times n plus 1, and this is equal to s over n. So now it's starting to look like we've got a partial fractions kind of identity just by considering the mean of terms within a sequence here. So we can rearrange this and write on the left hand side s over n times n plus 1 is equal to s over n, and we just subtract this term minus s over n plus 1. You can see this is going to be valid whatever value of s we use here. So now let's see what we can do with the next term in the sequence. So if we follow our long-winded definition of the next term, we have xn plus 3 is going to be the mean of all the previous terms. So first of all we add our starting n numbers, this s, then we add the next term, the n plus 1th term, which we know is s over n, then we add the next term, which we've seen we can write as the sum of these two fractions. So we also add in s over n plus 1, and finally plus s over n times n plus 1. So we've got here the sum of the first n terms, then the next term, and finally the next term. So we need to now divide this by n plus 2. But of course we know that this term is actually just going to be equal to the previous two terms, and they're all just equal to the mean of our starting n integers. So we know this is just equal to s over n. But now we can write this as the sum of all of these fractions, so if we have s over n plus 2, plus the next term we'll have s over n times 
m plus 2. Then the next one is s over n plus 1 times n plus 2. And finally, we've got s over n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. And all of this is known to be equal to s over n, the mean of our first n terms in the sequence. And at this point, we can actually apply our previous results to do with partial fractions here. So we've got n plus 1 times n plus 2, two consecutive integers here. So we can apply this result just where we replace our n and n plus 1 by n plus 1 and n plus 2, respectively. So we know that this term is actually just equivalent to s over n plus 1 minus s over n plus 2. And this is really nice because when we take away this s over n plus 2, you'll see that this cancels with our s over n plus 2 term here. So we get rid of this, and we can get rid of this term, which gives us now a slightly simpler looking expression. We've got on the left hand side s over n times n plus 2, then we keep this s over n plus 1 term, and we've also got this s over n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 term, and this is all equal to s over n. So this is starting to look now a bit like a partial fractions expansion for this term with the n, n plus 1, and n plus 2. So if we put this on its own on the left hand side, s over n times n plus 1 times n plus 2, we now know that this is equal to s over n minus s over n plus 1, where we get rid of this term, and we get rid of this term on the left hand side as well, where we take away s over n times n plus 2. So now for this final term here, it'd be quite nice to express this as partial fractions, but here we can't apply our previous result because n and n plus 2 aren't consecutive integers. So there's a little bit more work to be done to simplify this term to get a nice partial fractions expression for this fraction. And once again, we can actually understand this by referring back to what we know about this sequence. So if we look at the n plus 3 term once again, but in a slightly different light, we can think of this as the sum of the first n terms, this s, plus the next two terms, both of which we know are just s over n, and then all of this divided by n plus 2. And we know that all of this is just equal to s over n, because every term from here on is just s over n, the mean of the first n terms. So then if we write this as separate fractions on the left hand side, we get s over n plus 2 plus, then we've got two lots of s over n times n plus 2. So you can see now this is related to the term that we're interested in, and this is equal to s over n. So if we subtract this s over n plus 2 term, we get 2s over n times n plus 2 is equal to s over n minus s over n plus 2. And here we can just divide by 2 on both sides, so we get s over 2n now minus s over 2 times n plus 2, and this is actually equal to s over n times n plus 2, this term we're interested in. So then we can substitute this in then to conclude that our term s over n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 can be written as s over n minus s over n plus 1, then we're taking away this term, so we have minus s over 2n, and then minus the negative, so plus s over 2 times n plus 2. And you can see, actually, we can simplify a little bit further, because here we've got s over n, then we take away half of s over n, so all we're left with is a half of s over n. So we can write this as s over 2n minus s over n plus 1 plus s over 2 times n plus 2, which gives us a nice partial fractions expansion for this s over n times n plus 1 times n plus 2, which will be valid for any values of s. So you can see now how we could continue with this process, and if you're interested, you could have a look, try and do the same for s over n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 times n plus 3 by considering the next term in this sequence. I think it's really interesting here how we've done a lot of partial fractions work, but we haven't had to explicitly do that algebra. We've been able to do this all just by interpreting known results about this sequence, the fact that the next term is generated 
by adding all of the previous terms and dividing by the number of them. And we also know that every term in this sequence is just equal to the mean of the first n numbers beyond that certain point.